parts of the query. So page ID is populated by the variable called page ID. Title search is populated by the variable in the page called title search. And once those variables are populated, the query is then sent to the database and executed. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So you, you might think by looking at this that both page ID and title search are injectable, that for page ID, you're, uh, you could you know, do a union select or you know, put a semicolon or whatever, uh, or for title search that you could put a single quote and escape out of that and, and then start to manipulate your query. In fact, Cold Fusion actually has a, um, a mitigation against some of this stuff. Um, title search is actually not injectable. Cold Fusion, if you're inside a query tag, a CF query tag, and you use any Cold Fusion expression, which is uh, the thing in the, the hash marks, it's going to automatically escape any of the single quotes in those expressions. So underneath, when you're looking at the Java, you'll see escape single quotes around, you know, around uh, the variable uh, expression. Um, and the developer doesn't have to do anything to make that happen. It just happens. Um, so basically, there's not a good way, or there's not any way that I'm aware of right now to escape out of those single quotes because of that, that function being called. However, the page ID uh, expression is still injectable because it's not quoted. So uh, despite the fact that the Cold Fusion runtime is calling escape single quotes around it, there actually are no single quotes to escape from. So you can just do your normal, you know, put in a number and then the space, union select, or, or whatever the case may be, whatever you want your text string to be. And the way that they provide to protect against this is to use CF query param. It's kind of like prepared statements in other, other languages, but not really. Um, but it basically does the, you know, the, the, the syntax check against the expression to make sure that it's in a certain format. Um, so in this case, making sure that page ID is an integer and before actually running it. Um, so the pen testing tip to take out of this is when you're ever, whenever you're looking at a cold fusion page and you're looking for a SQL injection point, always look for a numeric parameter because if it's a quoted parameter, if it's a string parameter, which obviously has to be quoted, uh, you're not going to be able to inject in it because of the automatic single quoting that uh, escape single quotes that Cold Fusion does. So look for the numeric parameters, and those are almost always going to be injectable uh, unless the person put quotes around them in the, in the query, which they usually don't do. We're not going to spend a lot of time looking at the other common vulnerabilities in web applications because I want to spend time talking about uh, classes of vulnerabilities that are unique to Cold Fusion. Uh, but suffice it to say that it's a web application platform. Any vulnerability that's in the OWASP top 10 or any you know, popular web vulnerability is going to be possible in Cold Fusion. You can make the same mistakes. It'll look different in code, but you can make all the same mistakes. Uh, Cold Fusion has a lot of dangerous tags that can enable this. It makes it a little bit easier for people to make mistakes, making it easy uh, for them to access the file system or the registry, uh, not have to write a lot of code to accomplish that, to just put it in a tag. So uh, it's, it's maybe more likely that people will do dangerous things but there's nothing really unique about what the vulnerabilities, um, you know, how the vulnerabilities manifest themselves in Cold Fusion. So we're not going to talk a lot about that. So earlier we were talking about Cold Fusion components and the idea that you can have functions that are accessible remotely. And I wanted to show you what that looked like. So foo.cfc um, is a Cold Fusion component that we have on the server. And Basically, any method in that CFC file is a potential entry point if it's defined the right way. So the example URL up there says, well, load a method called xyzzy in foo.cfc and then pass it these two arguments. Um, and as you can see, it's just all done uh, on the query string there. Um, you can also pass the arguments in the post body as opposed to the, to the get, uh, but the method name actually has to be in the get. Um, flexibility, I guess. Um, and then there are various things that happen if the method doesn't exist or if the method's not specified. Um, uh, and it goes into those, some of those error handling methods or on missing method uh, that, that's going to be an application.cfc. What to look for here is uh, in any CFC, if you're doing a code review uh, or if you're writing a CFC, you have to define the function using the CF function tag. And at the bottom there, you can see access equals remote. If you're setting this thing up to be a web service, uh, you have to set up to access remote because it has to be accessed uh, over, you know, over the web remotely. But if you're just setting up the function such that it's going to be called by another Cold Fusion page, it doesn't need to be remote. Right? It can just, you can leave that attribute off. Uh, and by default, it'll be set to public, which 
means other, other pages can access it, uh, but, but it can't be accessed remotely. Um, sometimes people will turn on access remote for testing purposes and not turn it off. Sometimes uh, they'll misinterpret what remote actually means, so they'll think that it has to be remote for another page to call it. Um, so there's you know, common developer mistakes, and can't really fault Cold Fusion for this, it's, uh, for, for, for stupid mistakes. Uh, but watch for that attribute. So if you say access remote, then it's something that, that can be called remotely, especially if it's something that's sensitive, that's only intended to be called by other pages, and you can, you can, you know, you can call it directly, like you know, um, you know, changing somebody's permissions or accessing part of an application that you shouldn't otherwise be able to access, uh, that would be dangerous. Okay, getting back to variable scopes, and this it gets a little, uh, a little confusing here, but before we talk about all the different variable scopes that exist within Cold Fusion, um, and that you can call them by explicitly specifying the scope, uh, for example, cookie.something will look in the, you know, look in the cookie scope only. But what happens if you specify a variable without a scope? What happens in that case? Um, again, remember the, the overarching theme here, which is Cold Fusion was designed to be easy to use. So they don't want to throw an error message when that occurs because that makes it more difficult to use. So what happens if you specify a Cold Fusion expression such as like hash foo hash um, without a scope, it's going to go through a search order. And it's going to go through a bunch of different scopes in order looking for a variable called foo. And if it finds one, it'll use it. And if it doesn't find one, it'll move on to the next scope. There are actually uh, 12 scopes that it searches through. These are the ones that are probably the most relevant. Um, so they're in the proper relative order, but there are some other ones that are, that are sprinkled throughout there. Like if you have, uh, if you're inside a query loop, for example, that, that, um, that falls into uh, earlier on in the scope. Uh, but these are kind of the important ones because they're the ones that are uh, like CGI, URL, form, cookie, client. Those are the ones that are uh, most often tainted. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, kind of a side effect of this search, uh, uh, search order is that if you have an application that doesn't specifically use uh, scoping, you can almost always override form parameters with get parameters because the search order will look at the get parameter first. It'll, you know, URL is number three, form is number four, so if it reaches, uh, if it sees a variable by the same name in both scopes, it's gonna hit the URL one first. Question? Um, I don't know offhand, not all scopes are included in the search order, so some scopes actually do have to be specified explicitly and they will never be searched. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure request is in there. I'm yeah, I don't, I don't think, think it is, is either. Um, if you, uh, in the white paper, uh, we have a, a, a link to the part of the documentation that has like all 12 that are searched. Um, we just didn't fit them all on here. But yeah, some scopes do have to be specified explicitly and they'll never, they'll never be just like uh, automatically searched. So one thing that you should do if you're developing an application or if, you're, or if you have access to the code for an application that you're reviewing is just look for any scoping inconsistencies. So what I mean by that is, number one, any case where uh, unscoped variables are used, but more importantly, any case where there's a mismatch between uh, places where scoping is used and is not used. So if they write a variable, if they you know, set a variable using a scope, and then they read that same variable later without a scope, um, that's a potential attack point, because they're making an assumption at, on the, at the point of the read that uh, it's going to be reading only the variable that they set, but in reality, they, it may actually be reading a different variable that the user can control. And we have a few examples of that coming up. Okay, this is a really, really simple contrived example. Most of these examples are pretty contrived for the, for the sake of fitting on the slide. Uh, but here's a case where, let's say the application has a variable called important var, and earlier on in the application somewhere, some logic uh, was executed, and if a certain set of conditions were met, it set the variable called important var. Um, uh, and then later, uh, we have this code, which checks to see if that variable is present. Uh, and if it is present, they're making the assumption, right, that it was set by the application itself earlier on, uh, after, that ch after whatever logical check that it made. So it says, if defined important var, then go ahead and do this important stuff. Otherwise, print an error message that says you're not, access you're not allowed to access the functionality. So they're making an assumption here that 
uh, if they see a variable called important var, then the application must have created it. But that's not true because of the fact that they, they didn't use scoping. Um, so if I just you know, put important var equals anything in the URL or the post body or cookie or basically anything in the search order that I control, that check for is defined is going to come back true and it's going to access, it's going to uh, uh, execute the do important stuff function. The application developer doesn't realize that that's happening because they think that it's only going to be defined if they defined it. So that's one danger uh, of doing that. If they had done is defined variables dot important var, then it would have only checked the variable scope uh, and it would have, wouldn't have checked any of the other user controlled scopes. Here's another one. So you have uh, the logic up at the top of the page to process a user login. So it says it authenticates the user, checks the username and password, and it also calls a function called isAdministrator on the username to figure out whether the, the user is, um, is an admin. So basically, if they authenticate and they're an admin, then it sets a variable uh, using cfset called client.admin, and it sets it to true. Otherwise, it sets client.admin to false. So far, so good. And that's the type of code that might be in an application.cfm page, something that gets called before every page in the application, right? Um, commonly used for access controls and, and things like that. Now, later in the application, you have other pages that then go in back and check that admin variable uh, and make sure that it's true before allowing the user to do any restricted things. So there's a potential check that might be carried out, carried out later in the program. CFF admin equals true, and it checks to see if variable admin is called true, is set to true. Uh, you've probably already figured out by now that the mismatch there is that you're setting it with client.admin, but you're reading it with an unscoped, uh, an unscoped variable. So it's not going to look at just client.admin, it's going to go through that search order. And uh, if I put admin equals true in the URL, it's going to hit that URL scope before it gets down to the client scope. If you remember, client scope um, is number six. Right? So if I have any variable that's called admin, uh, earlier on in the search order than the client scope, then the application is going to use that one instead. And that's why I can just put admin equals true in the URL and it will bypass that check. And I could put admin equals true anywhere in the search order. Um, so again, it's a really easy thing to look for. I'm just looking for the fact that I'm setting client.admin, but I'm just reading admin. Really easy to find. Really common mistake, but easy to search for. Undefined variables are another case, sort of related to unscoped variables, um, but, but uh, kind of related to the fact that there are similar tags in Cold Fusion that you might think do the same thing, but they don't. And the two of these that are most often confused are cfparam and cfset. cfparam uh, basically looks for a variable and figures out if, it, uh, if it's not already set. And if it's not already set, then it will assign a value. CF set uh, will always assign, will always make an, uh, an assignment regardless of whether or not it, there's, there's already, already value there. Um, so we have an example um, of some, again, a contrived code snippet. Uh, let's say you have CF param name equals page num, default equals one. What that's going to do is it's going to say, well, if page num's not already defined, then assign it the value one. And then you have a CF output tag that prints some stuff on the page that says, now showing page one. Easy, right? Um, well, the developer may be assuming that the value is always going to be one other, unless it's, you know, already, unless they've already set it to something else, uh, but basically it's going to be exploitable. In